Uh, welcome, Chair Paul. Nice to have you back. Good to have you first this time of year. Ohioans know, Americans know, that our economy fundamentally is not a fair playing field. Instead, we have a David and Goliath economy where the largest corporations use their power to funnel all the gains in the economy to the top, aided and abetted by too many people in this room. Corporations squeeze every last penny from Americans' pocketbooks and workers' paychecks. They don't even try to hide it anymore. The biggest corporations are charging more for less. Americans are frustrated. No, actually, Americans are pissed off. They have fewer and fewer choices. Those choices cost more and more. Keeping prices down is part of the Fed's mandate, but as many of us have made clear, the Fed's main tool to combat inflation, raising interest rates, does nothing to address the biggest causes of rising prices right now, corporate greed. Keeping rates too high for too long threatens workers' paychecks while keeping other costs high, particularly housing costs. Housing prices and rents continue to go up. It's no surprise that since the Fed began raising rates, the amount of income families need to qualify for a mortgage has nearly doubled. Homeownership has long been a bedrock of our middle class, but today fewer and fewer middle class families can afford to buy a home. Higher interest rates are making our country's housing supply shortage worse, not better. We need more housing construction of all types. Our higher rates lead to the opposite and particularly make it harder for multifamily construction to work financially. Higher interest rates make borrowing more expensive for working families, whether it's for a mortgage or a car or anything else. Most people don't have the luxury of paying for everything in cash. And for the millions of Americans feeling their budgets stretched by higher prices, taking on credit card debt to pay for groceries and other essentials has become an option of last resort. But as more people struggle to pay down their debts, credit card interest rates are reaching all-time highs. Last month, Director Chopra testified in front of this committee and explicitly stated that credit card issuers are charging higher rates far beyond what they need to cover their costs. Corporate greed rearing its head again. Banks are making record profits at the expense of cash-strapped Americans. Every month that the Fed keeps rates high, Mr. Chair, it costs Americans money by making it more expensive to buy a house and to borrow money. Higher borrowing costs stifle future economic growth, leading to fewer homes being built, leading to businesses making fewer investments in the economy, and eventually, if the Fed doesn't stop, leading to workers losing their jobs. As they said, economic policy, I urge the Fed to weigh these trade-offs and remember whose jobs and futures are at stake. It's why I've worked with my colleagues to hold corporations accountable and will continue to do that. For instance, we fought to cap insulin prices for senior citizens. We'll continue to fight to extend this price cap, this price cap on life-saving drugs for all Americans. And why my colleagues and I on this committee are working, it's why we're working to lower housing costs for more Americans. The Fed also continues its work to keep the banking system stable and ensure consumers' money is safe. Last year, the Fed and other bank regulators issued a proposal to update bank capital requirements, strong capital standards, and you've heard in this committee overwhelming support for strong capital standards. They're critical from the economy, for the economy. It's our way of making sure that if Wall, Street's bet, Wall Street bets go poorly, which they often do, investors, executives, and shareholders should pay for it, not taxpayers. The biggest banks have spent, have spent obscene amounts of money attacking this Fed proposal. But you, the Fed, don't work for big banks. You work for the American people. Your concern should be developing capital rules that protect Americans' money, not protect bank CEO stock portfolios. The Fed needs to look past these shameless lobbying efforts and finalize a rule in the best interest of taxpayers. Another dangerous piece of the Wall Street business model that makes our ba banking system less safe is incentive-based compensation. This compensation model re rewards risky behavior that enriches Wall Street executives in the short term, but banks makes banks more likely to fail. We saw the results of that model in 2008. We saw it again last year with the failure of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature. Other regulators have moved forward with a proposal to rein in these rec reckless incentives, 
but the rule, Mr. Chair, can't move forward without your and the Fed's moving on it. This rule is long overdue. The Fed must join this statutorily required effort as soon as possible. The Fed also has the important job of reviewing mergers and acquisitions between and among banks. Over the last several decades, we've seen the largest banks grow into massive, literally trillion dollar companies, while thousands of small banks in rural communities in Northwest and Southeast Ohio, in small towns in those communities, in those areas, and all across America have disappeared. Consumers have lost trusted local banks. Small businesses have lost longtime reliable banking partners. Regulators like the Fed have the crucial job of guarding against mergers that reduce or eliminate competition and lead to bank closures or layoffs. I recently sent comment letters to the OCC and the FDIC on their current efforts. I expect the Fed to take the proper steps to ensure that its merger review process is robust and that it protects consumers and communities. Finally, Mr. Chair, you must ensure the Fed has high ethical standards. Fed officials should never again be able to profit from their positions by using confidential plans about Fed monetary policy and emergency programs to pad their investment portfolios. The board's latest update to its trading rules is simply not good enough. It still fails to establish the clear penalties needed for Federal Reserve officials who make investments in violation, in violation of the public trust. A rule with no consequences is really not much of a rule at all. The American people need to be able to trust that the Federal Reserve works for them in a time of deep cynicism that people have about the federal government overall. The American people need to know that officials aren't abusing their positions for personal gain. As chair, you have an important role to play to make sure our economy works for everyone, not just for Wall Street. The Fed's regional banks must do their part to hear from people and other stakeholders in their 12 districts to understand their needs. I look forward to hearing today how the Fed will balance its dual mandate, how it will protect Americans' money, how it will foster an economy that upholds the dignity of work.